go, sir. You're muted. Oh, thank God um, to know that I was muted. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Flona. Um, this service has been so beautiful today. Faith, you did an excellent job. I kid you not. There, God is going to use you in such a great way, Faith. And I'm here to say that publicly. God has his hands on your life, Faith. And God has his hand on Berean. And we just need to stay faithful. I wish I was in church. I would say, somebody just say, stay faithful. Because God is truly moving here at Berean. Even though it may be rocking, it may seem it may be rocking, God is good. Dr. Nick, now that I know you are now an honorary member at Berean, I take some pastoral authority. <laughs> so praise God, I expect to speak to you again. Thank you so much for letting God use you. Sister Johnson, mercy. Thank you for the words of encouragement. Thank you for being transparent. They really meant a lot and your words just humbled me this morning. I'm trying to stay focused on my sermon. And thanks to the praise team as we go into this divine worship experience, as we go into the word. Amen, amen. And we're not gonna forget about Sabbath school. Truly, God has his hand on Berean. To our Facebook family, may God bless you. To our YouTube family, we love you and we look forward to meeting you in person soon and very soon. But we have come this far by faith. Let's go to the word of God as we open up the word of God. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing. Father, have your way this morning as we open up God's word as we have this experience, this Zoom experience, Lord. God, we walk by faith and not by sight. We're looking forward to the time, God, that we will not have to be on Zoom, that we'll be face to face, God, praising you in spirit and in truth. So God, right now, Lord, we praise you. God, I thank you for each and every person who ministered today in a supernatural way, Lord. Thank you for those who have been given faithfully. They tithe and often thank you to Elder Reuben, Lord, sometimes it can be frustrating, God, serving people, but God, you'd make a way out of no way. So Father, have your way this morning is my prayer, amen. Today's sermon title is Know Your Roots. In celebration of African uh, Black History Month, it's important that we know our roots. Know our roots. I'm going somewhere with this today and you may be, uh, it may not be where you think I'm going, but uh, we have to know our roots. It's important to know our roots. So this morning, as I prepare to speak to you this morning, I hope you're gonna take some notes this morning because we gotta deal with the thought, know your roots, know your roots. Genesis two, one through three says this, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Exodus 31, 17 says this, it is a sign, that's the Sabbath, between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. We got to know our roots. We got, it's important to know our roots. And pastor, you can say, why is it important to know your roots? I'm glad you ask. Why is it important to know your roots? Here we go. Knowing your roots matter. Knowing your roots matter. Knowing your roots would tell you who you are related to. Oh, that should be a shout right there. Knowing your roots, you know, there was a time before social media, before this, this network platform, before, before the world, world wide web, when, when people would go to funerals and find out they were related to people they were dating. Mercy. You got to know your roots. Knowing your roots helps you define God's divine plan for your life. Knowing your roots help you define God's plan for your life. Knowing your roots remind you that you are not alone, that you stand on the shoulders of those who came before you. Knowing your bloodline in your roots tells you why you do what you do. There's power in knowing your roots. 
There is power in knowing your roots. I like what Pastor Watkins said last night on the Fireside Channel. We're going to get into that a little bit today. That is interesting that we can go to some of our, our friends and colleagues and they have a whole wall of individuals they're related to. But many times that's not the case in the African-American community. Knowing your roots is important to your identity. When you know who you are, you, are, you know whose you are. When you know who you are, you know whose you are. In 1976, Alex Haley wrote a book called Roots. The saga, saga of American family, Roots. It was an international success. And why wasn't it success? Because Alex Haley knew it's important knowing our roots. It's important. Here's what it was said about Alex Haley, Alex Haley Roots. Alex Haley's Roots is a monumental two-century drama of Kuta Kente. Y'all remember Kuta Kente, Chicken George, and all of them, Kizzy, and the sixth generation who came after him. By tracing back his own roots, Haley tells a story of 39 million Americans of African descent. Oh, y'all need to write that down. 30 million, million Americans of African descent. The story of Roots began in 1750. It ends seven generations later at the Arkansas funeral of a black college professor. And here's what I want you to get. Many African Americans can, can only trace their ancestry back to the Civil War. Can I say that again, Mama Lewis? Many African Americans only trace their ancestry back to the Civil War because you all know the story. African Americans was kidnapped was taken from Africa, shipped over here in the transatlantic slave trade, got here, sold like cattle on auction blocks, mercy, and was given names that weren't really not theirs. Even my name, my name, my name was given to me, my, my parents, that was a given name, that wasn't my name. I don't know what my name was. I, and we're gonna talk about that too, because we gotta understand, we have to know our roots, roots serve as a history for all African Americans. Roots, see, once they see, see when the Roots came out, it did something very powerful. Roots became an American television sensation and obsession. Roots became an American television sensation and obsession. After Roots came out, we got Ancestry.com. People are looking at their DNA to find out where they came from. Help me y'all quiet. African Americans, Caucasian Americans, people want to know their roots. The series first aired on ABC in 1977. Roots received 37 Prime Emmy Award nominations and won nine. It's also won a global Golden Globe, Golden Globe and Peabody Award. We got to know our roots. So let's talk about roots today for a second. So here we go. Let's get started today. Let's get into this. Why is Africa? so important to the world. Why is Africa, we, we know we know we gotta look at our roots, but there's another reason why Africa is so important to the world, Berean, to the world, Facebook, to the world, YouTube. There's a reason why Africa is so important to the world because we gotta know our roots. I'm not going where you think I'm going, but I'm getting there, just hold on for a second. So here's Africa that I found out, Sister Sophie, when I was coming up, I used to see these television shows where they had little kids. Their bellies were big. They had flies around them and they were trying to paint a picture or oh, Africa is just this poor country. I remember Tarzan, y'all remember Tarzan, that Africa is just a big jungle. Oh, amen, somebody. Where you, you had this one person swinging from trees. But when I did my research, come on, don't believe me. She could fact check me, look at Africa. Cotton, iron, gold, diamonds, coffee, crude oil. God created Africa in such a way that everything the people on Africa needed, he had it in Africa. But that's not, the, that's not real, the real reason why Africa is so important. That's a good reason, but that's not the real reason. Maybe it's this reason. Maybe it's because great queens and kings of Africa came from, came from there. Queen Cleopatra of Egypt, even though she was played by Elizabeth Taylor, she was not Caucasian American. I'm sorry, she was not. Then the Queen of Ethiopia. 
queen of Madagascar, Queen Nefertiti. Faith, did you know? Did you know that you come from queens and kings? And we should tell the story to our young people. Queen Nandi was mother of Shaka Zulu, Caleb. Shaka Zulu, great kings of Africa. Imhotep, great king of Egypt. King Shaka Zulu, Tinkamini, king of Ghana. Samoa Turi, king of Sudan. And Manasseh, king of Mali. We come from great kings and queens of Africa. It wasn't, it's not, it's never been a color thing. It is a king of queen thing. We have a lineage of coming from kings and queens. But that's not the real reason. That's not the whole reason. That's more to the story than that. Why is Africa so important to the world? Well, maybe it's because Timbuktu is the learning Mecca. Maybe it's because Timbuktu, starting out as a seasonal settlement, Timbuktu in Mali became a permanent settlement early in the 12th century. After a shift in trading routes, the town flourished from the trade in salt, gold, ivory, and slaves from several towns and states such as, as y'all can pronounce it, Bingo, and Sahara cities, y'all can pronounce those names. Timbuktu became part of the Mali Empire early in the 14th century. Now watch this for our young people who think we should not read, for our young people who are afraid of math, for our young people who are afraid to know their history. By this time, it had become a major center of learning in the area, that's Africa. But that's not the only reason why Africa is important to the world. There's another reason. The real reason Africa is important to the world. Y'all ready for it? Wait for it. Here you go. Here you go, Sister Carbon. The real reason Africa is important to the world, Africa is at the center of our understanding of our biblical experience. Africa. We should be, a, we should be proud to be from Africa. And see, the problem is when we hear half of the story, or somebody say half of the story, We've gotten a story where Africa don't have anything. Africa is a wealthy nation. When you actually Google Africa, you will see that a lot of our ancestors, a lot of our distant cousins have houses and land. They are bowling and shot calling in Africa. And there are, there are areas, there are areas where they are not developed and that is true. But Africa is not this desolate place that sometimes in the media it shows Africa plays a center role in our biblical experience, especially Egypt. And I wanna show you this little thing right here, if you see it, here is the great sea of um, the great sea of Philistine. The Exodus started in Egypt. Y'all know y'all, y'all Bible scholars. Y'all know that the Exodus started in Egypt and went across and the Red Sea, all that, my brothers and sisters, is part of Africa. It wasn't until the 19th century that people started taking half of Africa and talking about it's the Middle East. It wasn't never in the Middle East, it was Africa. And we need to understand as great as American is, I love being an American, we gotta understand that there's a history that we need to know because in order to grow, we gotta know our roots. Where did our roots start from? Oh, I know I'm, I'm shouting out by myself. I'm getting to the swamp. I'm, I'm just hanging now, I'm getting to the point. Here it is. There's another reason why Africa is so important to the world. There's one more reason. There's one more reason why Africa is so important to the world. Here we go. And Charles Bradford give us that reason. Hallelujah. Our Sabbath roots, the African connection. Author Charles E. Bradford. There's a reason that the Sabbath roots can be found in Africa. Come on, Augustine. Augustine, that great theologian was from Hippo in Africa, Augustine. So you understand this, that Africa not only gave us gold and oil and resources, but it's also given us the Sabbath. Oh, help me, oh, you, you, fact check me, fact check me. Here we go. Here's what Charles Bradford writes to the question, why should the African experience be included in the discussion? We must answer because the people of Africa, along with the kindred of all the earth, are children of the same father. Here's Ellen G. White. 
that there need not be a stroke place upon him. There is no person, no nation that is perfect in every habit and thought. One must learn from one another. We are in this together. We came from one father. If we believe in the biblical account, if we believe in the Bible, I don't know about you, I believe in the Bible. God created Adam and Eve, and then after that, then he created Noah, then after that, he multiplied the nation in Africa. The creation Sabbath have been preserved for almost 2,000 years, and primarily, watch this saints of the living God in Ethiopia, is a nation that is defined throughout its existence by its fidelity to the Sabbath, a commitment that has brought pain and suffering to its people. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, I'm, this is good and good. The Sabbath did not start on the continent of the United States. God created the Sabbath in Genesis. In six days, he labored and he rested on the Sabbath day. So the question is, what did Africa give to the world? The Sabbath, the word of God. God did this thing. Here we go. John Mentibi, scholar. Professor, Christianity in Africa is so old that it can rightly be described as indigenous, traditional, and African religion long before the start of Islam in the seventh century. I like this, write this down. Christianity was well established all over North Africa, Egypt, parts of the Sudan and Ethiopia. I know I'm not talking to a good Adventist because you've done your homework, you're a Berean, you've done your research. I'm talking to those on YouTube and Facebook who may not know that Christianity, what people may say, well, Christianity is a white man's religion. The devil is a liar. Christianity is not a white man's religion. Christianity is a world religion and it started on the continent of Africa. Mercy, we gotta know our roots. We gotta know our roots. We gotta know our roots. Exodus 3, 6 and 8. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the inflection of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and laws unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. You understand God sits high and he looks low and God has planned a plan, has a plan for his people. God looked in Egypt, come on somebody, you all know your history. He pulled out his people who were in bondage. And if anybody knows about bondage, it's the African-American experience over 400 years of slavery and God is still in the delivering business. And here's the word of God, that God gave us the Sabbath, but we gotta know our roots. All on the journey, God originally wrote the 10 commandments with his finger and gave them to Moses. Look what happened. In that God says, honor God's Sabbath. Honor God's Sabbath. Here's what Charles Bradford said, Pastor Charles Bradford. Sabbath says something about the character of his God, about his person. He gives to all liberally through his inestimable gift. God confers equal status on all humanity, striking down that human pride that is based on external physical features. Didn't we talk about that in Sabbath school? Through his inestimable gift, God confers equal status on all humanity, striking down that human pride, which is based on external physical features, bloodlines, achievements, sex, race, ethnicity. The same God caused his sun to shine on the just and the unjust people. That's why we don't have to worry about those in Washington, those people, elected officials who are not just. God makes his sun shine on the just and the unjust people alike, extends the gift of the Sabbath unrestricted to every human being. Sabbath is a time to enhance relationships with family and community and especially with God. It is a time for reflection, identity on the meaning of life and the relationship, especially our connection with God, the creator. His magnificent gifts 
is received with great joy. His token of love, his thoughtful gift. Well, that's a good book you got to get. Sabbath Roots, Sabbath Roots. Sabbath did not start in America. Sabbath started on the continent of Africa. Did you know, did you know that Sabbath is the only day God called by name? Did you know that? Did you know? Did you know that Sabbath is the only day God called by name? All the other days or weeks named after pagan gods with the liturgy. And this is why God reminds us have no other gods before him. Did you know Jesus and Paul went to the synagogue on the Sabbath to preach and teach? Did you know the Roman Catholic Church claims authority for attempting to change the day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday? Don't believe me. Do your research. Fact check. And we about to go and get into the sermon. I just have to lay this foundation this morning. Here we go. Check it out. The Catholic Catechism, the Catholic Church admits to changing the observance of the Sabbath to Sunday. Notice the following section from the Catholic Cate Catechism. Which day is Sabbath? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Sabbath? I need you to write this down. I need you to take a deep breath. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. This does not mean that we just stop talking to people who are Catholic, it does not mean that. It means that when we know our roots, we are better to have a conversation. When we know our roots in God, we understand why people do what they do. Let's keep it going. We gotta know our roots. Here's some other references. The Roman Catholic Church changed the observance of the Sabbath to Sunday by right of the divine and infallible authority given to her by her founder. This is what they say, Jesus Christ. The Protestant claiming the Bible to be the only God of faith has no warrant by observing Sunday. That's in the Catholic Bulletin. The Sabbath was Saturday, not Sunday. The church, that's the Catholic church, altered the observance of the Sabbath to the observance of Sunday. Protestants must be rather puzzled by keeping of Sunday when God distinctly said, keep holy the Sabbath day. The word Sunday does not come from any, anywhere in the Bible. So what, without knowing it, they are obeying the authority of the Catholic Church. And understand, when we were slaves, when our ancestors were slaves, they had to go to a church and they had to take on not only the name of their masters, but also the religion of their master. But praise God that God does not sleep. God does not slumber. God knew there would be an Adventist church, a church to be raised up to hallow his holy, holy Sabbath. Exodus, the fourth commandment, is not a suggestion. Remember the Sabbath day to keep holy. Six days should I labor and do all your work. But the seven days the Sabbath of the Lord your God on it, you should not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor male or female servant, nor animals, nor foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is them is, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and he made it holy. I like this from Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 in the New Living Translation. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interest on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Then the Lord will be your delight. You miss your shout. I will give you great honor and satisfy you with inheritance. I promise to your ancestor Jacob, I, the Lord, have spoken it. There's a blessing. There's a double blessing when we keep the Sabbath. Here's what Ellen G. White said. You know Ellen G. White, Spirit of Prophecy. The Sabbath was not for Israel merely. Here we go. The Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world. It had been made known to men in Eden, and like other precepts of the Decalogue, it is imperishable obligation. Of that law of which the fourth commandment forms a part, Christ declares, to heaven and earth pass one jolt or one tittle should no wise pass from the law. I know people have said, well, pastor, didn't, they, didn't he nail the Sabbath to the cross? No, the Sabbath was not nailed to the cross. What was nailed to the cross, my brothers and sisters, and I'm just teaching this morning, what was nailed to the cross were the ceremonial laws, the killing of goats and lambs, 
to cleanse our sin. Because Jesus Christ was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, he nailed the ceremonial laws to the cross. So Sister Lewis wouldn't have to go in her backyard and kill a chicken or kill a lamb. So Sister Bible wouldn't have to go ahead and kill some animal or bring it as a sacrifice. Jesus Christ became that sacrifice. Said well. So as long as the heavens and the earth endure, the Sabbath will continue as a sign of the creator's power. I got to read that one more time. You missed your sign. So as long as the heavens and earth endure, the Sabbath will continue as a sign of the creator's power. And when Eden shall bloom on earth again, God's holy rest will be honored by all beneath the sun from one Sabbath to another. The inhabitants of the glorified new earth shall go up and worship before me, says the Lord. Matthew 5, 18, Isaiah 66, 23. Check it out for yourself. Just don't take my words. Research it for yourselves. Here we go. Elder Bill, there's a double blessing in keeping the Sabbath. A blessing was placed upon the seventh day. What is the purpose of the blessing of God? Unto you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Acts 3.26. The blessing of God is not put upon man because he is good, but the blessing of God is put up on him to make him good. I got to read that one more time because we understand, Elder Williams. Here's your, here's your answer. The blessing of God is not put up on a man because he is good. Ain't none of us good. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the blessing of God is put up on him to make him good. The Sabbath blessing is the blessing of being turned away from my iniquities. As we have are reminded of the great power of God in Jesus Christ to save from sin. The Sabbath blessing is a blessing of sanctification. Can anyone truly keep the Sabbath of our Lord Jesus Christ unless he's a converted person? He cannot. It is only a converted person who can keep the Sabbath because the Sabbath is the blessing of conversion, the blessing of redeeming power, the blessing of sanctification. And only that man can keep the Sabbath of our Lord and Jesus Christ in whom creative power has wrought. So that Sabbath becomes to him a sign, a memorial of great power of God working in him to turn him away from his iniquities. We should all be rejoicing, whether we on Zoom or in person, that the Sabbath is a sign that God is turning us away from our iniquities. The sign of great power of God working through Jesus Christ to save us from our sin. And so it's clear that no unconverted person can keep the Sabbath. Watch this, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you, not, not Pastor Norwood, if you love Jesus, we should keep his commandments. There are commandments, there are not recommendations. Revelation 14, 12, 13 says, here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the spirit, and they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. My brothers and sisters, it is a blessing to understand your roots. See, when we understand that, that the Sabbath did not start in America, that the Sabbath was a gift from God, we know who we are. We, knows who we, we know who we are. We know our identity in Christ. And here is the good news. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And once we become new creations, we are moved, we are changed, we are transformed by the renewing of our, of our minds. If you heard my testimony last night, I wasn't raised a seven day Adventist, I was a Methodist pastor, but I thank God that I found this message. We should be proud to be seven day Adventists. In fact, I would say, and this is me, Elder Wyndham, Every African-American, every Caucasian-American should be seven-day Adventists. How do you say that, Pastor Norwood? Why can't you say that, Pastor Norwood? Because the Bible says God created the earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested. Man had tried to say Sunday is a rest. You can rest on a Sunday, but the rest comes on the Sabbath. There's a blessing 
and we got to become dogmatic. We got to become intentional and tell the world God created the Sabbath. It was not created by man. Christianity, it was not a quote unquote white man's religion. Christianity started on the continent of Africa. I know some people may not want to hear that. Look in the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. The Bible cannot lie. God has given us a power in knowing who we are. In Acts, the Bible says we move and have our being in God. Once we know who we are, we know how to operate. Once we understand that the Sabbath was made for man, once we understand that the word of God is true, we can't just keep one commandment and not the rest. We can't keep nine and not the one. In order for us to get to heaven, saints of the living God, we have to keep all of the commandments. And when we do that, Sister Johnson, when we keep the commandments, watch how blessed we will be. And some people can say, Pastor, you know, I keep the commandments. I return my tithe and offering. It's, it seems like I'm still going through. And you are right, because the Bible reminds us there will be trials and tribulations in this world. But when there are trials and tribulations, our God will come and rescue us. Corona can't stop God. A president can't stop God. Your problems can't stop God. But when we know our roots, when we know in our blind bloodline that we are children of a powerful God, that when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are in, we become part of Jesus Christ's bloodline. We have the power and the Bible says greater things will you do because I go to my father. And then when we understand who we are, we understand that because we love Jesus, because he's the head and, and because he's the head, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, no weapon formed against us will prosper. No lie, no deception, no problem will prosper because we know who we are. We know whose we are and we know God has the power. Amen. Amen. You know, I was going through something this, this week, Sister Inez, and God reminded me, he said clearly, Pastor, did you think Satan would not be happy? Did you think Satan would just let you come in and do what you want to do? Then the Holy Spirit reminded me, know who you are in Jesus Christ. Know that you have the power over the enemy. Know that you are a raw priesthood, a chosen generation. And as the Holy Spirit talk, spoke to me, I'm speaking to you on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube. You are a raw priesthood. You are a chosen generation. Come forth for such a time as this, pull out of darkness to walk in God's marvelous light, to walk in the word of God. Yes, there are some imperfect people in the Adventist church. There are some people who are not perfect in the world, but when we know our roots, hey, when we know who we are, when we know who we come from, when we understand the connection for the Sabbath and where we are right now, we can hold our heads up high. We can look to the hills from which cometh our help because we know God is on our side. So I don't know about you. I don't know if you've been fretting, but stop fearing. Walk by faith and not by sight. Know your roots. Know that you're in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, that you are son and daughter of Jesus and his blood, his spiritual blood is running through you. Know your spiritual roots. It's good to know your physical roots. It's, no, it's good to know where you come from, but know your spiritual roots. Know that the Sabbath, God created a Sabbath for the whole world. And as Seventh-day Adventists, it's our job and our mission to tell the world that there's a way, a better way to live for God, to love God, and to spread this gospel message. God loves you, and I do too. Know your roots. Know your Sabbath roots, and God will bless you. He will keep you. And when we all stand before judgment, he will say, well done my good and faithful servant, because you didn't just keep nine of the commandments, you didn't keep one, you kept all of the commandments and I will bless you and I will keep you. You may not get the big house now, you may not get the nice car, but what's important is your internal salvation when we keep the commandments of God 
follow his commandments, live his commandments, tell the world about his commandments, that there's rest in the Sabbath. And when we rest in the Sabbath, we're resting in Jesus. And when you rest in Jesus, you don't have no one to fear, no thing to fear, because Jesus is on your side. Know your roots. Because there's a blessing in knowing your roots. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to remind your people on Facebook, on Zoom, on YouTube, that we got to know our roots. Lord, if somebody want more information about the Sabbath, have them contact us, God, and our church or Adventist church and Sister Florida will put it on the screen because we're living in a time right now where we are responsible for what we know. We're living in a time right now where God is asking his church, his believers to walk in the truth that they know. So God, right now, I thank you one more time for using me to remind your people it's important to know their roots, their Sabbath roots. And God, I thank you, Lord, for each and every person on this line. Give them a double blessing, Father, of your spirit, of your Holy Spirit. Bless and keep them, God, is my prayer. Amen. Amen.